So you have a bunch of Chase Ultimate Rewards points and have absolutely no idea what you can spend them on. Or maybe you've been through the Chase website, seen some different options to spend these points on, but you don't want to get ripped off or get a bad value for the points that you've spent so much time and effort accumulating. Well, that's what this video right here today is exactly for. I'm going to walk you through the Chase ecosystem of points. We're going to go on a little bit of a journey today through the 10 different options that Chase gives us. With each option, I'll tell you a little bit about that and what you can do with it, and also tell you the value of your points as you redeem under that option. So let's not spend another second waiting and let's get right into it. I thought it would be really beneficial to do this in a ladder style video. What I mean by that is as we go through the 10 different ways to redeem your chase points, start with the redemption options that have the quote unquote lowest value and then work our way up to the top for some of the more complicated but extremely valuable ways to spend your ultimate rewards points. Before we step onto the ladder together though, we have to look at what value is and how we're gonna define that to compare different rewards options. Cent per point value is the way across all credit cards you look at how valuable your points that you've earned are really going to be worth in real life dollars and cents. Unfortunately, calculating the value of a single credit card point is pretty simple. You will divide the dollar value of whatever you're trying to redeem by the number of points that it costs to redeem that. Then you'll take that number and multiply it by 100 to get your cent per point value. Cents per point are great because we can use it to compare all different rewards from gift cards to flights to booking hotels all with the same number so you can see how much you're actually getting for the points that you've earned a key number not just with chase but across any credit card or bank that you might work with is one cent per point anything below one cent per point is considered bad value one cent per point is considered pretty average and the further away you get from one cent per point is considered really increasingly good value for the points that you've earned. And that leads us right into redemption option number one, which is paying with points at Amazon checkout or with PayPal. Chase gives you the option to pay on Amazon or on websites that accept PayPal directly with your Chase points. This is really easy to set up. You'll simply link your Chase card to your Amazon and your PayPal account and the amount of points that you currently have whenever you go to check out will automatically update on the sites that you're about to process your payment with. Each time that you're on Amazon or potentially checking out with PayPal, you'll be given the option to pay for the full purchase or a part of the purchase with your Chase Ultimate Rewards points. As you can see here, making a purchase of $14.93 with my 1,867 Ultimate Rewards points gives me a cent per point redemption value of 0.8 cents per point making it actually the lowest redemption value that you can spend your chase points through any sort of method. Paying through PayPal is very similar. All you have to do is pop open your PayPal app, add your chase credit card, and boom, your points are linked. Now, while these are the lowest values possible that you can redeem your chase points for, Chase is known for having a ton of other redemption opportunities that are much higher. So let's get on to those right now. Chase experiences. Chase experiences are a combination of sports, entertainment, music festivals, and other options that could be a really fun way to spend your Chase points. Chase is a big sponsor, for example, of the PGA Championship and the PGA Women's Championship. Another benefit to being a Chase cardholder is at some of these big Chase sponsored events, which you can find under the Chase experiences section of the Ultimate Rewards Redemption site, is that Chase will sometimes set up special areas for their card holders to access increased benefits. For example, at the PGA Championships, there was a Chase Sapphire Reserve Lounge with free food, drinks, and the type of top class experiences that you would find in a typical airport lounge, but brought onto the site of the golf course. To get a ticket to the PGA Women's Championship, for example, costs $40 or 4,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards points giving us a clean one cent per point value for all Chase experiences. The next option is Chase Dining, which is kind of like a branch off of Chase experiences 
and you'll see what I mean here in just a second. Chase Dining offers different reservation or booking options, usually in your bigger cities, although they do have a wide variety of options inside the page. For example, I live in the Kansas City area and can book a reservation through Chase at 901, which is kind of a nice rooftop bar restaurant with a beautiful view of Kansas City. A lot of times when you use Chase Dining, you're not actually paying for your meal, but you're paying for a reservation area at the restaurant or a special private area at the property that you're hoping to eat at. Here, I can book a rooftop cabana for $275 or pay through that with points for 27,500 points, making Chase Dining a clean one cent per point redemption value. Chase gives you the option to redeem cash back at one cent per point. This is as simple as getting $10 cash back put placed back into your bank account at a thousand points. Now, it's important to remember that while this is not the most exciting option out there, it's always good to have in your back pocket in a pinch in case you're ever in need of immediate cash. Now we start to climb the ladder a bit more, moving into gift cards, which give us between a one cent per point value and a 1.18 cent per point value on the gift cards that you'll find in Chase Ultimate Rewards. Gift cards are broken into two categories. One, just standard gift cards, which are redeemable at one cent per point. And there is a huge selection of these. However, Chase also breaks off a few different types of gift cards into gift cards under a sale category. And most of these cards are going between a range of about 1.11 cents per point to 1.18 cents per point. Now, a big time pro tip that we can use to compare Chase to other banks out there is in the gift card section and what kind of value you get from your points. With Chase, at a minimum, you're getting one cent per point and oftentimes they'll rotate different stores and different brands into the sales section where you'll get an even better deal on the gift cards. However, at a bank like American Express, the top limit that you'll get on your gift cards, and usually these are the worst ones out there in my opinion, is one cent per point. A lot of the other typical redemption rates for Amex is between 0.7 and 0.8 cents per point on their gift card choices. So again, picking the right bank for redemption rates does really matter, and that's just a small example. With a redemption value between one and 1.25 cents per point is the Chase pay yourself back option. Paying yourself back is another way to say getting statement credit for purchases that you've already made. Most purchases that you've made will be erasable at a one cent per point value. For example, this Chick-fil-A purchase I made for $13.81 cost me 1,381 ultimate rewards points to completely erase, giving that a one cent per point value. However, Chase rotates different categories of erasable purchases, which can be cleared at a higher cent per point value. Currently, they have a number of different select charities that you can use to pay yourself back, where you'll get a value of 1.25 cents per point. Chase will rotate these pretty frequently, so make sure you're checking back to see if you'd like to use some of your points at an enhanced value on different categories that may be elevated at the time you're checking. Taking another step up the ladder, we move into redeeming your points for Apple purchases with a value of between one and up to 1.5 cents per point. Now, at the time I was recording this video for you guys, Chase was running a special 25% boost on redemptions for Apple products inside the Chase Apple partnership. Unfortunately, by the time we'll be able to get this video edited and published, I think the sale will just be about ending. So that's a little bit disappointing as that moves the Apple purchases category back towards that one cent per point. However, if there's a theme that you'll quickly realize going throughout this video, Chase likes to put little boosters and bonuses in different sections throughout the year for their different redemption categories. I've seen in the past Chase boosting Apple redemptions up to a 1.5 cents per point value at their very highest. One pro tip to hit you with is if you're considering redeeming anything for a one cent per point value, you may look at just simply purchasing that with your card and then going in and erasing the points afterwards at a one cent per point value. This will at least allow you to continue earning additional ultimate rewards points for the purchase of that item and then clearing the points away like you normally would have with the one cent per point value on the back end. 
Now, as we look at the last few categories that Chase allows you to spend your ultimate rewards points on, I'm going to warn you that we're about to take a big step up, not only in terms of the value on the ladder that we're getting, but also a little bit in terms of the complexity of how difficult it is to redeem these points. Now, the next sections, which will be focused on the travel portal, hotel transfer partners and airline transfer partners are not impossible, but they take a little bit more practice and a little bit more research and trial and error. So don't be disappointed if your first redemption isn't the perfect redemption. We'll help you get there and subscribe to the channel for more similar tips that can speed up that learning process if you're just at the start of this yourself. Additionally, at any time, if you're interested in chase cards like the two I'm holding up on the screen right now, and you wanna support the channel in a absolutely free way, using the links below in the description of this video makes the biggest difference in allowing to continue to help me produce this content and the effort it takes for free. Let's dive into the next redemption option, which is the travel portal, which will provide a guaranteed value between one and 1.5 cents per point, depending on which chase card you have. The simplest way to make chase redemptions for travel is going to be inside of Chase's own travel portal. There are multiple cards that give you access to the Chase travel portal, but the Sapphire Preferred and the Sapphire Reserve coming in at $95 for an annual fee and $550 for an annual fee are the two best cards to get the most value from your points in here. The reason being is the Chase Sapphire Preferred gives you a guaranteed 25% multiplier on the value of the points that you have, while the Chase Sapphire Reserve gives you a 50% multiplier onto the points that you have. You could stay at the famous Guitar Hotel at Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida for a cash value of $619 per night. The Chase Sapphire Preferred gives you a 1.25 cents per point redemption rate inside the Chase Travel Portal, meaning this property is going to cost you 49,520 points. However, if you have the Chase Sapphire Reserve as your travel credit card through Chase, you'll be able to stay at this property for a 1.5 cents per point redemption value. That brings down your total points that you need to spend to book this $619 cash value room to 41,267 points. That's a difference of over 8,000 points, which is close to about $100 in value. The booking rates and the value you get will extend across the portal, not only for hotels like the one I showed you there, but also for flights, activities, cars, cruises, or tours. Taking our biggest jump up the ladder yet is going to be investigating the option of transferring your Chase Ultimate Rewards points out to hotel transfer partners. This is going to be unlocking even more value because now we're going outside of the Chase platform where Chase can before control exactly what their points were worth and make them fall with inside a very specific 0.8 cents per point to 1.5 cents per point range. However, once your points go outside of Chase, note they can't flow back in, but they also have the benefit of sort of being uncapped, only restricted by the value of the different transfer partners that you send them out to. To transfer your points out to a transfer partner, the only thing you need to do is make sure to link your Chase account with your own individual rewards program account at whatever transfer partner you're hoping to send the points to. Now, we're specifically gonna look at for transfer partners for hotels at the World of Hyatt Rewards program because Hyatt is hands down. One of the reasons that people love Chase cards so much because of that Hyatt access and you also get far superior value through Hyatt than the other two options, which are the IHG Resorts and the Marriott Bonvoy program when transferring out through Chase. We're going to look specifically at a little bit more of the aspirational travel that you may have seen watching different videos here on YouTube or heard about other people taking with Chase Ultimate Rewards Points. On the Hyatt website, you can book the Numu Boutique Hotel San Miguel de Ende, which is a five-star hotel costing you $874 in cash per night. Or you can book that through Chase Points transferred out to the World of Hyatt Rewards Program at a one-to-one -one ratio for just 25,000 points per night. Doing the math, this comes out to a 3.5 cents per point value. And not only do you get incredible value for your points, 
but also some of your top end hotels and resort properties are just gorgeous, legitimate five star stays where the architecture is beautiful, the amenities are beautiful, and the service is unlike anything you'd be able to experience almost anywhere else in the world. And while the Numu Boutique Hotel is a standard five star hotel, if all inclusive resorts on the beach are more your thing, you have a wide selection. Simply search on Google for high all inclusive resorts and browse for the area you want to stay in looking under hotel properties with letter categories A through F. These resorts are all paid for and once you book through points where you can receive similar values to the one I already showed you, you'll get everything complimentary inside your stay. When you start to utilize airline transfer partners through Chase, you'll be able to start searching for sweet spot saver award flight redemptions, which normally would have a really, really high cash value, but have an incredibly low value when paid for through points. There are 11 airline partners that Chase gives you access to. For your domestic flights, you have already ingrained in the Chase system, Southwest Airlines, United Airlines, and JetBlue. But you'll also have access to select American Airlines flights through a partner like British Airways and access to select Delta Airlines flights through a transfer partner in the same airline alliance network like Air France. Now, when you book through these alliance transfer partners, you get access to massive value that you can unlock, but there's usually a trade-off. That trade-off is not all flights that you see for cash are gonna be bookable through points. And you may have to search pretty extensively for those sweet spot flights that really pack that value in. The simplest trade-offs are gonna be through your Southwest, United, and JetBlue. I typically see a value of between one and two cents per point on those redemptions. For example, flying out of my home airport in Kansas City to San Diego on a one-way flight would cost a cash price of $215. If I transfer my points from Chase out to Southwest, and then book through points, I could do that for 15,000 points plus $5.60 in taxes and fees. To do the math on that, that's gonna be a $215 cash price minus the $5.60 in taxes and fees divided by the 15,000 Chase points transferred over to Southwest Rapids Rewards points that it would take me to book that flight, resulting in a cent per point value of 1.4. For a big value example though, Let's look internationally. You can transfer Chase Ultimate Rewards Points to Air France Flying Blue Loyalty Program. For a flight from New York to Paris on an economy ticket would typically cost $1,131, a very expensive flight. However, you can check and flip this booking over to booking with points through Air France. And you can see booking options for 25,000 points plus $10.10, or even 20,000 points plus $64.20 in cash. So what kind of value are we talking about that holding? Doing $1,131, the cash price for that flight, minus the $64.20 in fees, divided by the 20,000 points it would cost you to book, results in a 5.3 cent per point value. You are getting over five times the value of a typical Chase redemption for a flight that costs over $1,000 to book. Now note, just think on a standard sign-up bonus on the Chase Sapphire cards, which you can get in the description below. That's a 60,000 point bonus once you hit the minimum spend. You could book three of those identical flights on a 60,000 point bonus, costing multiple thousands of dollars in cash, but really you're getting it for a handful of Chase points, which shows the true power and sometimes the value you can get from your ultimate rewards collection. Now, the realization at the end of these redemption options really shows you why people just love Chase. I really hope you enjoyed today's video with the clips inside and redemption options visualized for you on the screen. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to spread it to more people who it could also be helpful for as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.